after we set sail when it was blowing a devil of a gale with a ring tail set all about the mizzen peak and a rule britannia plowing up the deep with a yo he ho to ro ro wind the loft and rum below the naval academy museum presents a history of the navy in 100 objects welcome to the 12th episode in our series this is the last episode in our month-long focus on the War of 1812. It is also the first time we move outside the Naval Academy Museum and begin to take a look at other objects around the Naval Academy grounds. Let's take a step back for a moment and frame the past month's episodes. In the early part of the War of 1812, the naval portion of the war was marked by several victories by American ships over British ships. The hallmark of these victories were those by Constitution and her sister ships, powerful, fast, and innovative frigates that outmatched and outclassed any of the British frigates that faced them. It was a significant demonstration of American shipbuilding prowess and resulted in the heads of the British Navy issuing instructions that British ships were not allowed to engage American ships in single ship-to-ship -ship combat. Our examination of the War of 1812 also brought us into discussing naval innovation. For example, one of the first models of a gun turret and a unique use of a sea anchor as a tool of escape by USS Constitution. We also discussed the pivotal battle of Lake Erie, in which we focused on the sextant given by the defeated British commander to Oliver Hazard Perry and how this battle ceased British expansion westward. So, with this little bit of framing in mind, we conclude our month of 1812 objects by going to McDonough Hall, which is the home of the Brigade of Midshipmen Athletic and Physical Training Facilities. Mounted on an inauspicious granite base in front of McDonough Hall is one of the many cannons that are located around the Naval Academy grounds. It is impossible to walk around the historical areas of the Academy without seeing these relics of previous ships and battles on display lining pathways, and ceremonially guarding the entrances to buildings. Each cannon has some historical significance. However, this particular cannon located in front of McDonough is not only one of the most significant, but also one of the most unique. If you examine the front of the cannon's muzzle closely, you will notice a deformation on the top left in the shape of a cannonball. The area around the mark is further bent and deformed. This cannon is not American, but British, and this mark was left by an American cannonball during the final pivotal battle for control of the Northeast between the British and Americans during the War of 1812, the Battle of Plattsburgh. In the wake of British losses to American ships, the British Navy instituted a blockade along the American coast, confining much of the small American fleet to ports. However, two major naval battles occurred not on the high seas, but on the inland lakes of the United States. The first was the previously mentioned Battle of Lake Erie, and the final was the Battle of Lake Champlain, or Battle of Plattsburgh, during September 1814. The Battle of New Orleans and the Treaty of Ghent ending the war followed soon after. The dented cannon we are looking at today is a relic of the American victory over the British in the War of 1812, and this particular cannon caused the death of the British Commodore George Downey after the American cannonball knocked this cannon barrel off its carriage on the British flagship HMS Confiance, crushing Downey. We now go to the front of McDonough Hall to the Confiance cannon, and we listen to Dr. Scott Harmon take us through a little bit more of its history. Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Harmon, and we are here on the yard of the Naval Academy talking about some of the artifacts that reflect the history of the United States Navy. And this one we're looking at now is a gun from the HMS Confiance. That was a ship built on Lake Champlain during the War of 1812. It was the flagship of the British force that was uh, coming down Lake Champlain, paving the way for the British Army to invade New York from Canada. Uh, the Confiance, uh, being the British flagship, met an American squadron that was anchored in Plattsburgh Bay uh, in September of 1814. 
uh, in what eventuated as the Battle of Lake Champlain. Uh, in this battle, the Americans under Commodore Thomas McDonough uh, had anchored in the bay. They had put lines out, uh, anchor lines out, in a way so that uh, they could turn their ships if they needed to. Without sailing, they'd be at anchor, they'd uh, turn on the capstan, it would turn the ship uh, 180 degrees. Uh, the British came down uh, from the north, uh, rounded Cumberland Head, had to sail into the wind, a uh, very slow process. The Confiance uh, put itself nearby the American flagship, uh, the USS Saratoga. One of the cannonballs from the Saratoga hit this cannon on the muzzle. You can see a dent on the muzzle and the force of that impact knocked the cannon over and standing behind it was the British Commodore who was crushed uh, by the cannon and uh, the Eventually, uh, the British lost uh, the battle. Uh, the British were forced to surrender the Americans. Uh, in this battle, uh, the Confiance was hit something like 250 times uh, by American cannonballs. Uh, the American ship, uh, Saratoga, was hit by far fewer and was able to survive. The turning point came in the battle when uh, the American Commodore uh, Thomas McDonough had the Saratoga turned using its anchor cables, bringing a fresh, undamaged side into the battle and forcing the British to surrender. This was one of the most strategically important battles in American history. Up to this point, the British uh, were in negotiations with the Americans trying to bring the end of the war. They wanted the Americans to uh, give up much of what was the old Northwest, uh, the states of Washington, Illinois, Ohio, uh, that area. Uh, this defeat of the British squadron, the uh, retreat of the British Army from New York, meant that the British negotiators could not demand American concessions. And the United States now has the configuration it does because the United States was able to keep this territory. We hope you will join us in future uh, broadcasts of the uh, history of the United States Navy seen in the objects of the Naval Academy Museum. Thank you.